27,000 trees are cut down every single day just to make toilet paper. And that makes up 15% of global deforestation. It's the single largest consumer industry to make up deforestation, and I knew that I could directly have an impact on it. So I went to the supermarket the next time we were due to get tissues, and I went to the toilet paper aisle, and all I could find was various brands, all made from trees, all packed in plastic. Um, so I searched for tissues for about a year. We tried to find a sustainable alternative that was high quality and was plastic free and tree free and we failed to find one. Welcome to this special podcast series on Impact Talk in collaboration with Advanced Media Trading, stories of UAE's purpose-driven entrepreneurs. In this series, we explore the stories of five incredible women entrepreneurs who are creating a positive impact in the UAE. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce Saha Karumbi. She's the founder of Bambuyu, a company providing eco-friendly tissue products as an alternative to regular ones. Saha, warm welcome on Impact Talk. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. How are you today? I'm good. Great. Excited to be here. So, Sahar, I would love to start actually the conversation by learning more about your story, because I know that before starting Bamboo you, you were in marketing, you were doing something completely different. So can you explain us your path into sustainability that led you to start Bamboo you? Yeah, so um, I worked in digital marketing my entire professional career life, and I actually didn't really have a plan to get into entrepreneurship or sustainability. But um, I became a mother five years ago, and um, three years ago, my daughter was born. So for the second time around, I was a mother with a bigger family. And while it was obviously very exciting, it was also um, scary. And it got me thinking about the impact that my larger family has on the environment. And I wanted to personally make some changes in my house and in my own personal life to um, reduce our impact. So I started with my own home and I looked around um, the areas where we were creating the most waste and my kitchen or my bathroom ended up being those rooms. Um, I ended up finding a lot of really good alternatives for our plastic packed cosmetics and cleaning material. I found local produce. I found, um, you know, grocery channels that packed our stuff in plastic free packaging. Um, and I ended up looking at our tissues and I realized that I don't know much about how tissues are made or what they're made of. Um, so I started to read about it. And when I came across the information that I found, it completely changed the way I perceived tissues and the way that I decided to, to buy and consume tissues for ourselves. So um, I found that 27,000 trees are cut down every single day just to make toilet paper. And that makes up 15% of global deforestation. Um, it's the single largest consumer industry to make up deforestation, and I knew that I could directly have an impact on it. So I went to the supermarket the next time we were due to get tissues, and I went to the toilet paper aisle, and all I could find was various brands, all made from trees, all packed in plastic. Um, so I searched for tissues for about um, a year. We tried to find a sustainable alternative that was high quality and was plastic free and tree free and we failed to find one. Um, and one night I was sitting with my husband, just, you know, as you do, complaining about the experiences we've had throughout the day. And, um, you know, we both decided that our tissues were not up to our standard and we wanted something better, something that felt good, that, you know, um, was, was better for the environment generally. And we joked about starting a company um, so I woke up the next day and still felt quite strongly about um, starting a tissue brand that was tree-free and plastic-free. And I decided I'm going to spend the next few months learning about it and seeing if um, it's something I can introduce to the UAE. So that's what I did. Um, so with my background in digital marketing, um, I felt there were areas of the business that I was confident in and I knew that I could do well. I'm also very passionate about um, design and, you know, it was something that personally spoke to me. So I combined my drive to 
make a better world for my children and future generations with what I knew and I launched Bambuyu about two years ago. That's an incredible story. <laughs> Thank you. So it started like you know, realizing the impact of our tissues and the joke of starting a company and then doing research and then finally, you know, launching your company. Absolutely. Oh, wow. And what was, because there is a big, you know, uh, it's a big shift from, you know, having a job um, and finally shifting into sustainability and, and, you know, having this willingness to make an impact and then, you know, starting an, a, a comp your own company and becoming an entrepreneur. So how, how did you feel about that? How, how it happened? Um, it, it was, I don't, I don't think I knew what, what step I was taking when I took it. Um, and I had a plan. I knew that I wanted this to not be a hobby. It was going to be a business. So I wasn't going to take a small bite or, you know, introduce something small. It had to be big and impactful. Um, but I don't think I realized what a big change I had made until I was halfway into <laughs> into the business with a trade license and, you know, with a uh, hotel and restaurants as clients. And I was like, okay, this is, this is real. I'm in the midst of it. And, um, you know, by that time it was too late to be scared. Um, but I think knowing what I wanted as an outcome was helpful in, in reaching the goal. And, you know, I had, I had goals and steps that I put forward. So the initial step was to set up a direct to consumer channel and like really speak to our core audience in the UAE, like people who are like me, interested in sustainability, who want something practical that is not too far from what they've experienced before. You know, we weren't going to um, introduce a, something so innovative and so new in the way that you use it that you can't you can't make that switch. So it had to be accessible in that sense. Um, and, you know, I think in the first few months, I learned a lot from those interactions. And second step was to reach out to our business partners. So we spoke with restaurants and hotels and got our first, second, third, you know, multiple business um, partners from there. We entered retail with Kipsons. And, you know, that was, that was a really exciting move for us because now we could speak to a bigger audience and, um, and it, it, it just has grown from there. One step after another. Yeah. And how would you describe the mission of Bambuyu? So as cliche as it might sound, our mission is to make the world a better place for future generations. And I think it was, it's important to me to know that yes, my impact today is, is great, but what I want to see is the change in five years, 10 years, 50 years. So in the way that children are educated and exposed to information about sustainability and the way that we're preserving forests and switching to something that's a lot more renewable and sustainable as a raw material um, and just making sure that, you know, looking back decades from now that we've, we've had a big impact and we've left the world in a better shape than we came into it. And that's not cliche. <laughs> it's very much linked to your story. Yeah. It's been me with your becoming a mother and the yeah. fact it had. Yeah, my, my kids are really involved and engaged in everything that we do and make. Mm -hmm. They they know everything about Bambuyu. They're, they're, you know, the first to experience the new products that we have and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, they know sometimes more about composting and recycling than I do. They would, you know, point out mistakes that we would make at home. Um, they're, they're five and three. So it's, um, it's just great. And it's not all at home. It's also the schools that they go to and the friends that they're surrounded with who have, you know, the same values and the same um, goals. What would you say are your challenges? Oh. Several, various, um, various areas. One is... As much as, you know, the UAE has enabled us to build something amazing, you know, and and for me to be able to, within a span of six months, set up my company, have a bank account, have, you know, operating logistics infrastructures set up to, to kind of create and move ahead with my business. To have 
other players within the, the universe of sustainability and the UAE plug into that, for example, for us to be able to source our raw material locally, that's, that would be incredible, mm. you know? So I would love to, a few years down the line, be able to go to a bamboo farm here in the UAE mm. and, you know, source our raw material from there. And that would also reduce our costs in some way. We'll be able to have more flexibility. The offering that we have to our customers, I think commercially also, you know, as, as much as you want to um, offer your customers the best value you can as a startup, you also have to be very conscious of your own sustainability as a business. Absolutely. So, so to make sure that you are able to keep the lights on and survive and give the business a good chance at continuing to grow. Again, it's, I think, a long-term goal for us to continue towards reducing our impact while reducing our cost and creating most value for our end customer. And who are your customers? Is it more businesses, um, individuals? It's both. So we have, we have our um, individual households that shop from us and Obviously, that's really, that personally speaks to me a lot because I also get to connect with people who are, who are like me. Our, a lot of our customers are, have become friends and, you know, people I go to if we're innovating for a new product or, um, you know, if, if we're doing surveys or if we have questions, that's the first place that we go to. Um, and we work with the hospitality sector. We work with um, offices and corporations. We... Um, work with um, venues that host events. So it really is anyone who is looking to switch to a more sustainable tissue product. Um, we're speaking with the educational sector as well. And I think that's, that's going to um, be really exciting for us. And again, for me personally, because my kids are school, at, at a school age and um, it's, I think it's important for us to be where, you know, the young minds are and be able to speak with them and um, and start these conversations early. And you've been in business for a couple of years now. So I want to ask you, what have you learned and how are the discussions now going, especially with businesses, compared to a couple of years ago? Yeah. So I think in terms of conversations with businesses, going back to the previous question, um, our individual customers are a lot more um, in tune with the changes to be made. So sustainability tends to be a priority at home first because before it becomes a priority at business. And um, with a lot of businesses, at the end of the day, the conversation is on you know how it impacts the bottom line. And as a sustainable brand, um, that doesn't use plastic packaging, which, you know, it, it increases our cost. Um, that uses a premium raw material that's different to tree mate, um, tree mate tissues that already puts us at, um, at a different price point to, you know, the, um, the standard tissues that have been used in the industry. So I think the conversation started with this is, this is why. It's, it's not even why bamboo you, it's why bamboo. So why do you need to switch to a different raw material in terms of tissues? And um, I think there, there was a lot of pushback initially, but now I think in going into year three, we are hearing a bit more openness from larger organizations. And, um, you know, the conversation is now more on, okay, now why bamboo you? And we're able to go in with, you know, what, what we specialize in and how we differentiate. Um, I think it's a big step forward. It's taken a long time, um, but it's starting to have, show a slight growth. Yeah, so the discussion evolved from, you know, purely educating them to why they, we need to source this kind of materials to now finally why yeah. choosing you. And uh, can you tell us more about the product? Because I didn't mention anything so far about mm -hmm. your product. And I know that the, the catalog is evolving. So if you can tell us more about that. Yeah, sure. So we started with bamboo toilet paper. Uh -huh. um, so maybe I'll tell you about 
the why of bamboo as well. Yeah. Um, so the reason why we chose bamboo is because one, it's a very fast growing grass. It's not a tree. So just like the grass and the lawn, when you harvest it, it grows right back. We don't need to replant it. And in fact, it grows so fast that a lot of the time farmers would have to pay a fee or, you know, put a lot of resources in to, to remove them. Um, if you've had bamboo at home, you'll see that it grows from all sorts of directions. Um, so that was a big point for us. Two is that it's an antibacterial grass, so it grows without needing pesticides and chemicals, as opposed to trees that need to be treated and it impacts the environment in forests. Um, bamboos just really grow healthy and, and, and strong without, mm -hmm. without any involvement. Um, and um, it's also hypoallergenic, so it just gives us very soft skin, kind, skin-friendly tissues that are great for the entire family. So toilet paper was our first product, and um, I, 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 you've seen them, you've, you've experienced them yourself. Um, it, yes. <laughs> um, so they're individually wrapped in recycled paper, uh -huh. and you know they're they're nice to display, but it also protects it from in a beautiful paper. In a beautiful paper. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And, um, you know, they're conversation starters. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we, we put in our guest bathroom and, you know, our guests would come out and be like, well, th this is amazing. What is this? Why? And then you get to speak about the why of, you know, you as a consumer having switched yeah. to, to tissues. Um, so that was, that was our first product. We then went on to launch facial tissues and kitchen rolls. And they're also made from bamboo pulp. Um, and recycle packaging. Again, beautiful, something that adds a pop of color to your home and every corner of your, you know, office, hotel, business, whatever it is. Um, and uh, we are planning on introducing new products. So oh. hopefully a few more down the line. Um, so how do you envision the future for your business? Wh which future? How, <laughs> how far down? <laughs> Next couple of years. Next couple years. Years. Okay, so... Um, the plan is to grow outside the UAE. So well, now it's only UAE. For now, it's only UAE. So we plan to move to into Saudi next year and the rest of the GCC after. Um, so I think that would cover us for the next two years. And again, it's it's been owner operated so far um, without you know really external support. So I think that that may or may not change. But what do you mean? You don't have a team? I don't have a team. Oh yeah, I have, like I have third. I, I run the business on my own. Oh wow! Um, so I have third party suppliers that we work with. So we work with a courier company. I sometimes have freelancers that support us. But as far as the current operations go, it's been just run by me. Um, as we grow, obviously the team will grow also. Um, so yes, growing geographically, we're introducing new product lines, still staying within the tissue category so innovating and creating better ways and um, better tissue experiences and more sustainable experiences I would also like to think that we would be in many more touch points that customers would engage with be it in retail so brick and mortar grocery experiences in hotels and restaurants um, in schools it I would like to think that maybe, maybe not in three years, maybe in five years down the line, bamboo would be common practice and no longer something that the eco niche would, would look for. It is something that everyone's aware of and it is an option if they want to switch to it. You touched upon something very important when it comes to eco-friendly products uh, is the accessibility to the product. And I always see if they are not in the supermarket, basically where Everybody, you know, as you know, the grocery shopping, we are missing something, you know, in this, um, in this, in this process. So, how do you see that, you know, happening in the next two new years? Oh, well, well, definitely, there is there is a big interest from our side to be yeah. in in retail, okay. and you know, I think the conversations have already started. It's just um, for startups, there is a lot of for any business. Um, there, there are upfront expenses that you have for entering a retail channel. Um, for online channels, it's a bit more flexible, mm -hmm. um, but we need to be prepared commercially. We need to, it need to make sense for us in terms of the margins. Mm -hmm. 
I need to make sure that we're operationally ready in terms of the team that we have in place. So it's really building those slabs before we, you know, enter a channel that we can't manage well. But I think as far as the customer experience goes, even if it's not a channel that they are buying from, it is still where they get to touch and feel our product. And there's nothing that replaces that. Um, so our, our toilet rolls, for example, they're, they're double rolls. They're, they're twice the length of any standard toilet roll in the market. And I think unless you see it, or, or use it, you won't really know how long it will last you, right? Mm -hmm. So if a customer is not introduced to it and is not kind of seeing it, feeling it, looking at the size of it compared to other products, it, it, it is challenging to communicate that same message um, on, on similar online channels. And when it comes to the adoption of a sustainable lifestyle, especially in the UAE and the region, so this year is the year of sustainability. We have COP28 happening. How do you see um, the habits, the behaviors of people, you know, changing and going and asking more for such kind of products? Yeah, I've, I think we've all, we've all seen seen that change, and it's amazing. I think. Um, for me, when I started to want to adopt sustainable changes, it, was, it wasn't that I didn't know what to change to. I didn't know what to change even. So it's knowing what products can be problematic because you don't need to change everything in your life, right? Like not everything that you use today is problematic. It's just choosing um, products or items or um, habits that have the highest impact, negative impact on the environment and starting from there. So I think the fact that in, in groceries, we no longer use plastic or it is, it is charged at a fee. That's, that was a big step. It was attempted, what was it, three years ago? And I think well, it's pretty we've, um, yeah, it's finally happening. And, you know, you, you see people carrying their reusable bags or, you know, like me just stuffing their handbag with <laughs> the little groceries that they buy. You do the same. <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah um so I think those those small steps are evident I also live in a community that um is is gated and you know I more and more every day not now because it's the summer but during winter we see more people cycling and more people walking choosing to live where you know you're closer to your work so you can avoid um taking out a car or you know it, it really it's, it's small steps, but it is very visible steps. And I think more importantly, we've seen kind of governmental mandates and movements that enable that and encourage that, that, that makes the bigger difference as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing the, the change is happening. Yeah. It's, it's slow, but at the same time, I always say we're in a region when, where things can happen so fast. Yeah that, you know, um, we never know what's going to happen the next couple of months to, to win. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was you who mentioned it when we met uh, two years ago, that maybe maybe things happen later than they do. I don't know, we're maybe a few years behind Europe, but when it does, it's tomorrow. It's not when we decide exactly. to make a change here in the UAE. It doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. It's it's really, we go ahead with it. Absolutely. It happen. Absolutely, yeah. and I believe it is what's going to happen in the next couple of months when it comes to laws and regulations uh, uh, on sustainability. So, Sar, the, the podcast is name is Impact Talk. So I want to ask you, if you could give one piece of advice to inspire people to make a difference, what would it be? Um, be... Be generous with your new discoveries and habits. Uh -huh. I think it's um, having having the conversation. So if you know if if you're the person in your in your office or at within the circle of your friends who knows more about sustainability, talk about it. Like it's it's nothing. Um, you shouldn't take it. You shouldn't keep it to yourself. I think you know just being the source of change and also every little step counts it's like there's nothing that's too small that will make a difference you know i think for us 
as 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 a company or you know within within our mission we want to make that huge impact we we are a startup we're a UAE based startup we're not you know I don't have a global reach and that that should never be a reason for me to not think I can make a difference you know I really want to think that you know even if I haven't started the conversation on on tissues or converted someone to my tissues I've made someone think and consider a change Absolutely. I think we all have the power to inspire and having those conversations actually can make like a huge difference. So, um, absolutely. Um, this special series is about purpose-driven entrepreneurs and you are one of them. So I want to ask you these questions. Um, what have you let go of to follow your purpose? The stability to being, to be in a salary job. It is a big decision, um, you know, especially for us with um, with a family of two kids. It's it was it was a decision that we made as a family. And I think that was a big part of um, the conversation that my husband and I had. And I'm lucky that you know I have his support, just both mentally to you know go for it. I've got you, and also go for it. We'll 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 be fine. <laughs> We'll figure it out. That you will figure it out. Um, and also, you let go of your of your free time. My my business is my business, and my hobby is my business. And when I'm with my family, they're involved in my business. <laughs> so there's been a lot of um, a lot of bamboo in our lives, and it's been amazing. But it also, especially at the beginning, it leaves very little room for other things to enter. And I think being prepared for that and knowing that it is it is a sacrifice like you, you never turn off your laptop you never turn off your emails you're on holiday you're not really on holiday um and knowing that it is a start phase and you know it will be in a different form or shape a part of your everyday life but um the sacrifice and how do you feel now as a as a purpose-driven entrepreneur um I feel a lot more empowered to have conversations. I think it's very different when you when you're adopting changes yourself than when you're trying to be a change maker and you have a tool to make that change. So it's it's no longer what can I do about my impact? It's this is what I'm doing about it and these are the people I need to surround myself with and this is the way forward so it just gives you a clear path it's given me a clear path on how I can make that change that's beautiful thank you so much for sharing your story with us so it's very inspiring what you've been doing with Bamboo You, and I really wish you all the best for the for the years to come thank you for having me So a big thank you as well to our partner, Advanced Media Trading, for hosting us in their beautiful showroom for this special series. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Let's spread the word about the UAE's purpose-driven entrepreneur. Stay tuned for our next episode on Impact Talk.